Humans of the Cardboard, today we're having an awesome discussion video. I'm actually really excited for this one. This is kind of fun. So basically what we're doing today is we are categorizing every single banned Yu-Gi-Oh card that like initially was designed to be part of an archetype. And, and there's some other ones here. I mean, there were some things I left off from pulling on. I already have 34, 35, I think, different, uh, different cards we're going over here. Most of the ones I left off, they're, like, not even really part of an archetype. Like, they technically are, but, like, not really. They're not really part of a deck like that. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you look at the categories here, we have um, cards that we can just turn into hard ones for turns, and they just basically immediately get fixed. You have cards where you can take away their genericness. That's another big one. Uh, you have a card where you basically have to destroy it. There are just cards on the ban list that exist that, like, I read over them, and I'm like, this card will never get better. They have to just literally change how this card works, what it does. Uh, a lot of floodgates kind of fall into this category, to be honest. Um, the fourth one is Leave It to Power Creep. These are cards that I don't even necessarily are necessarily wrong. They're just too strong right now. And we literally just need to leave them there in a year, two, three, four down the line when a lot of power creep has happened and the game's just a little bit faster. The card, like game or uh, decks are just a little bit better. Those cards may be able to come off the list down the line and then i have a, a little section for cards that i just think can come off the ban list right now uh on those so um yeah let's get into this thing i want to talk about how we can get most of these cards off the list and what it would take so let's start off here uh with something random how about something huge like halky fibrax um to me halky fibrax is take away the genericness i i hate that this summons and there's, I guess, two ways. So most of the uh, cards that end up in this category, there's two ways you can go about it. You can either change it. If it's an extract uh, monster, you can take uh, change its materials. So that way, maybe something that's super generic, like Halk, any two monsters, as long as one is a tuner, is too easy. Um, or you change its actual effect, where he says summon any level three or lower tuner from deck. How about if he said summon uh, a Crystron tuner? from deck right like i think either way would work i think i'd like to change it to summon a christron that way you could release it off the ban list right now and it would actually help christron and they just got support as well so they'd all get tied in together and add on to uh, make that deck even cooler even better i think that'd be really cool next up ronin Toten. this is an easy hard ones per turn for me um I just think with like Swap Frog not being once per turn, and that's not really what we're discussing here. We're talking about Ronin. Uh, if you make Ronin hard once per turn, it like doesn't matter anymore that Swap's not once per turn because he can send however many frogs he wants. If Ronin can only come back once per turn and you can't just keep looping him over and over again, uh, I think him at hard once per turn would be the perfect solution there. So uh, I like that a lot. Uh, Ronin to one. Or Ronin hard once per turn. Uh, heavy Metal Foes Electromite. There's there's two arguments here. You could put it and leave it to Power Creep. Some people may even put him come off now, but those are probably just Pendulum fans themselves. I'd actually put this in Take Away Generic, I think. Um, this is supposed to be a Metal Foes monster, and this card has very little been used for Metal Foes in the competitive scene. I almost wish this card just said, add one Metal Foes monster to your extra deck on summon instead of adding literally any Pendulum monster in the entire game. We already have Beyond the Pendulum that adds any, um, any monster in the game, any Pendulum monster in the game to hand. Like, I think that's already enough. I don't think we need two of those. Um, so if they make this one specific to, uh, to... Uh, metal foes, I think that fixes the uh, the big problem there. Uh, Starving Venom, uh, destroy it. Just destroy it. It's an FTK card. It's the kind of card that uh, no matter how long you wait to power creep it, we will just get more and better engine cards to help facilitate the FTK anyway. FTKs are not what we want here. So I think this is a destroy it kind of card where um, they would have to completely rework the text on this card. Uh, just completely destroy its ability to work the way it does. Uh, either give it a different effect that's like actually useful or just completely make it unplayable and just delete its ability to kill you with burn. Uh, that's what I think needs to happen there. Next up we have I Sold, Two Tales of the Noble Knights. This one's actually really hard. Uh, because like the solution here if you put it in make it uh, take away the genericness is one you either make it take noble knight specifically as materials or you make it so that it can only summon and add noble knight monsters from deck to hand instead of any warrior and any warrior um, or even may go even a step further and even with the equip spells make it so it can only dump in for noble arms or noble arms cards right like they can go pretty deep on that like if they made it so even if they left the materials as warrior 
Uh, so that way, generic warrior extenders or starters can get you into this card, like Connector, right? If they change it to only adding a Noble Knight monster, so you're not able to add, like, Gear Freed and stuff like that, like, that is definitely a restriction. It's not the most, that's the least relevant one, for sure, because you're not even able to do anything with the monster that time anyway. Uh, but then also adding in uh, so that it can only summon a, uh, a Noble Knight, which could be in for Nobles as well. Um, and you can't dump the Phoenix Blade anymore. You can't dump any of the other cards that aren't Noble Arms that are generic equips that get you free value in Grave. I think that would put a pretty hefty restriction on this card and I think make it doable uh, in Infernoble and still good for them, but not outside of that archetype, which I think is cool. Kick Kalos. This is a Leave It to Power Creep card. Uh, the card's hard ones per turn. It's just really, really strong. And look at Tier Limit already is still considered like a rogue deck and has been for every format basically since uh, Kit Kalos actually got banned. So I'd be terrified because this would this would just make for immediately the best extra deck card in the deck on top of a deck that's just still been a solid rogue deck ever since it got hit really hard on the ban list. I think we're okay to wait until Power Creep comes through for a couple of years and then drop this card off the list. Fairytale Snow, I think this is an easy hard one's return for me. There are a lot of people who already want Snow off the list. I just want the degenerate part of Snow off the list. And, and the degenerate part to me is just being able to do it turn out, like over and over and over again, which means turn one, being able to do it multiple times and just keep getting a body on field. Uh, and then even on the opponent's turn, potentially being able to pair it with something like IP Mascarena and like summon it once, link it off with the Mascarena, summon it again, you get two Book of Moons, you get two Banishes with IP into SP. That's a lot of interaction uh, for just like a Link 2 and Fairy Tale Snow and Grave, right? So I think that needs to be restricted a little bit. We make it hard on its return, I think it's at least slowed down enough where I think this card becomes a little easier to swallow. Uh, Fiends with Lacrima. Uh, <sighs> I, I don't know, man. It may be leave it... It's either destroy it or leave it to power creep, I think, to me. If you leave it to power creep, you could just wait a couple of years until the Fiendsmith engine just isn't even the best generic engine anymore. Or you destroy this card. And by destroy it, I mean, maybe you just take away the burn effect. Like, that's that's the craziest part to me, is the burn and, and how many people really just hate that a generic, a generic engine like that... Uh, is giving access to basically any deck that can make a link two can now burn you for game, which is which is disgusting. We don't want to have to deal with that. So I think I like destroy it more than leave it to power creep, assuming the time rules stay the same into the future. Um, and just changing the burn effect is the main thing there. Uh, hot red, uh, hot red king calamity, whatever. Uh, I hate this guy. Uh, destroy him, right? As long as he exists the way he does, we will have ways to cheat him out or just actually meet his condition and synchro him on the opponent's turn. If this card's ever being summoned, it is it, it is the sign that something degenerate's happening. Get this card out of here. Some more Bird of Sovereignty. Cool card. Uh, I think it probably needs to be restricted to uh, to some more birds only. When he summons on the end phase, he should only be summoning some morgues. Um, Bear Statue of the Wind, Wind is like terrifying um that card is on the ban list currently but like still they'll find other pieces in it and it just restricts a little bit of like a card design for wing beasts so i think restricting this to some orgs is probably the move uh sprite elf this is another one do you just what happens if we just replace uh when elf says he can reborn any level two or rank or uh, uh link to uh, what if it can only reborn sprite monsters period uh, so you still have that grind ability, and it's a really useful card to help you extend turn one, to help you uh, work in the grind game by reborning uh, blue or jet on the opponent's turn to get searches for follow-up. Um, right? I, I still think that's plenty of power in this card for decks that play the sprite engine, especially since like, especially since like level two decks can already get like if level if you already play a level two strategy, you can make uh, a gigantic which summons blue. And then boom, you're getting like, you know what I mean? Other level two engines still get you, like get this card live. You just can't reborn other level twos. So no like floodgates or super crazy interaction cards on the opponent's turn, um, but still really good, like just resource card for the deck. Uh, Scarecrow, this is a leave it to power creep. Uh, it's a card that's scary because we saw how powerful this deck can be uh, at full power. Uh, and this card's kind of uh, Prank Kids Meow Meow Mew-esque in that this card itself doesn't even really do that much. It just allows, it just helps facilitate the deck uh, 
without even actually doing much on its own. So it's a card where we'd want to wait a couple of years until Power Creep comes through, maybe a little longer. I mean, this card's already been hit for quite a bit. Um, but just to make sure that that, that deck isn't going to storm right back through and, and decimate the format again. Uh, but yeah, I don't think you need to change much about this card. Beatrice, let's take away the genericness. So uh, I, I know people have already thrown out the idea on this card where if you change this card's text to like swap, basically, where like if you make this card in BA off of Dante, then you can uh, use its effect turn one. Uh, but if you're making it with two sixes, which has just become easier and easier and easier as Yu-Gi-Oh has progressed and cards have gotten stronger, um, that if you make it with two sixes, you cannot activate its effect turn one. You can only do it on the next turn. Uh, and I think that may be a good way to give, like, BA a little extra boost while taking away this card's generic application. And I think a lot of people would choose not to play it at that point. Fair to Anaconda. Dude, I don't even know what to do with this one. I guess you could leave it to Power Creep, but man, you might have to wait a while. I, I think it's probably safer to say destroy it. I, I think there's too many, like, fusion cards out there that this card's just wild. Like, honestly. Like, I, I just think there's too many fusion cards out there that releasing this even like no matter how long you wait we're going to get more fusion archetypes with more crazy fusions and this card's just going to get crazier and crazier so i'm not about this card uh coming back i i think you need to change the effect to, to steer it more towards maybe like predator plant specifically but you're going to have to destroy its text entirely and reword it like in an entirely different way uh so yeah uh master plan this is an easy hard once return make this girl a hard once return and she can totally come off it's a cool it's a nice little addition piece to spiral but at once per turn it's totally fine all right into the spice i think mathic uh circular come off the list um let's be honest konami hit circular down to one and that deck did not perform the next format at all it, it had very very mid uh uh, you know, results in the next format, and then Konami still went through and banned Circular entirely. So, I don't fully get it. I think Circular could be unbanned totally, even if it's just to one. I get it if you don't want it all the way back at three, but that was also over a year ago when that happened. So, like, we've also seen a lot of power creep since. So, even Mathback at full power, like, is still like it is going to be contending with better decks than it was back then. I think this is a deck that can uh, that can get Circular back. Aurorodon. Aurorodon's terrifying. I think you have to destroy Aurorodon, to be honest. Um, at first, I was going to say, can we release Aurorodon? Because, like, if we change Halk at the same time and release them both, then, like, they don't even work together like that as much anymore. I mean, they still would, because technically with the changes we make to Halk, you would just summon the machine, Crystron Tuner, and then just go straight into Aurorodon. My problem with Aurorodon is the three bodies it gives you. Three bodies, then you summon an O-Lion. Like, this card's already... This card's giving you multiple synchros. Uh pretty generically especially with like halk if you don't change excuse me halk's materials like halk really abuses this card um so for me i think you just need to destroy its text a little bit you need to change it around um and, and rework a little bit of how how much this card does because it really does a lot uh union carrier this is definitely a take away the genericness for sure um i would change this card's text so that it says you can equip one union monster from your deck there are less than 50 in the entire game uh in terms of play playable ones it's like basically all abc cards uh dragon buster is not a union so that card you lose that card and you lose the ability for just like any deck to generically make this and get like a card in rotation that has no business being gotten in rotation via that engine right so uh, I like this card uh, because this helps ABCs, uh, but also make it so it's not being dumb in other ways. Masterpiece, man, some people would say it can come off now. Some people would say leave it a little longer for power creep. I kind of want to just destroy it. I, I think being able to specifically tailor tribute this card to make it a towers versus whatever you want. And on top of that, he's just a walking dryden. And you know what? He's not too broken. He's only 2950. Leave it to Power Creep. I wouldn't release him just yet. But I think it's some... Like, you know what I mean? He's 2950. Like, every deck has something that can get over him. And he is a Dryden, which is terrifying. But I know he's good. But, like, the archetype he's in is, like, not good anymore either. So, yeah, I think it won. It's fine. Mermaid, man. We can put Mermaid and leave it to Power Creep. I mean, we're looking at it with the Fiendsmith engine. Like, oh, a generic engine where make a link to and you get a bunch of stuff for free. That's basically what this is, except you also need to discard. Um, I think this is probably one where I wouldn't release it just yet. 
but like, see, I, I just I hate how generic it is, but man, it's there. Yeah, I guess you have to. I guess I guess this is a leave it to power creep one. You could argue just destroy it, so we never have to deal with it because we'll never want to release it. But yeah. All right, curious. This is definitely take away genericness, right? Uh, make this so that it only sends a light sworn card, which means they could make this card a good because this card I think it does it send one and then it mills three. So like send a light sworn that like when it's sent mills three and then this card mills three now this card is just oh we're making a link three that mills six like that still could see play in certain decks um yeah i i just hate being able to send every single card in the game to grave we saw the dangers allow us to generically abuse this this card and you know we with with the ease of like linking into things that like it's so easy to manipulate types and attributes so um you know this card's just going to get easier and easier to make yeah, Mew, I actually think this card can come off the list right now. Um, even if you want to just put it at one, I think Power Creep has come through enough where prank kids, uh, they, they don't have much extension. So uh, I still think they're just pretty fragile. So I'm cool with that. Uh, Arise Heart, uh, destroy it. Uh, it's a walking macro cosmos. It's a floodgate. You have to change that effect. The rest of it's fine. Like his interruption effect is powerful and, and good. Um, but the fact that he's also just a walking macro is too much. You need to change that. Lavalval, uh, chain. This is an easy hard once per turner for me. Uh, I don't even have to think twice about the God, my freaking head. Move my fat melon over here now. All right, because we're gonna get to a new page soon. Uh, sending any card is just too much for a generic rank uh, four, but also you need to put this in hard once per turn if you want to ever let this off the list at more than one. Uh, so that's another thing. He needs to kind of get both. Dark Matter Dragon, this is Destroy It. I completely reword this. Uh, galaxy, this is, I guess, this is supposed to be a Galaxy card. It's not at all. We need to fix that. Zexel, same thing. This is just dumb, dude. These dumb win conditions. True King of All Calamities, dumb. Zen Mighty, this is an easy hard once per turner. Uh, it's an extra monster that if you want to release to three, you need to make this a once per turn because Zen, Zen uh, or windups are known for being able to just loop effects over and over again. So we don't want that to be the case. Uh, Broadbull. Broadbull is a once per turner to me. You could also have a discussion about making it so he only searches Zodiacs instead of any Beast Warrior. But um, I don't think that's the biggest deal in the world. We have Gallant Granite. We have Infernal Flame Banshee. Like, we have a couple generic rank fours that search stuff. Um, but I think he, uh, I think you need to definitely make him a once per turn because Zodiacs can loop cards. Uh, but um, I think that would go a long way. And I think you'd come off immediately if you did. And then Dryden. Like, I think Dryden can come off the list right now, but I think if you want to have future plans to release Broadbull, to release, you know, Rat Pier at some point, to release Barrage at some point, I think you would need Dryden to be a hard once per turn. So this is more of a long-term step. Right now, without releasing the others, you could take him off the list immediately. But I think for, like, future-proofing, make him a hard once per turn. Uh, and then you have uh, Brilliant Fusion, which is kind of scary to me. Uh... I think you can probably come off the list right now. Definitely at one. It is still a scary card because, like, it does give you the ability. One, you get a body for free. Two, you get an additional normal summon. Not the biggest thing in modern day Yu-Gi-Oh!, but, like, in a certain deck it could. Ritual Beast, maybe. Um, and then three, it also um, gives you a generic Foolish Burial for, like, any light, aqua, thunder. I think there's fairies in there. I think it's... Um, I think there's more. Pyro, I think, is another one. Like, there's... It actually gives you a Foolish Burial for, like, 40% of the cards in the game. Like, it's, it's a lot. That's a lot for me. So, I would... I would... Uh, I'd still have trepidation about it. Zodiac Barrage, I think, can come off the list as well. This is the only way that Zodiacs have to, like, extend through Interruption that doesn't take Normal Summon. So, uh, I think it's fine. I think it's just a good engine card. I don't think it's out of this world broken. I just think it's a really good engine card. Uh, destroy it. Destroy this card. Because there's always going to be disgusting stuff you can summon to your opponent's field. So you just need to... This card just needs to not do what it does. Dumb. Gofu. Uh, I would take away its genericness for Gofu. I, I think this being able to be used by, like, literally every deck to just put free Link Fodder. Like, here's the thing. I think no matter how long you wait for Leave It to Power Creep, like, Gofu will still be nasty. Like, Gofu still just says three Link Bodies without normal summon like go off like make something generic make sp before you start any of your place you're you're playing around nib like by by just playing this card kind of thing like that is too much for me um 
If you want to make it just a Blackwing card and it kind of just supports Blackwing, I'm cool with that. Restrict it in some way, but like I don't think we need much more than that. And the last one here is the Jin card. You have to destroy it. Uh, this is a floodgate. It says neither player can special summon ever. That's terrible. Um, but yeah, that, there's my list there. Um, if all of, like imagine just like at some point, you know, let's say three years in the future, we look back and we said all of these things happened, right? They made all of these six cards a hard ones per turn. They made these ten. They changed their text so that way they're not super generic anymore for any deck or any warrior or pendulum. To, be, to abuse, right? They take away all these degenerate cards. They wait on these cards to let Power Creep catch up to them before they release them. And then they release these cards. Like, I think they could do it. Uh, you know, Konami would have to be a little more active on how how often they're errating some of these cards. Because as you can see, we have 16 cards just here. And that's all. Uh, that doesn't even include all the cards they'd have to destroy the text of and completely rewrite them. Um, but I think I think it's a fun discussion to have regardless. So there you go, guys. Um, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you disagree on any of these cards? Do you think some of them need a more severe touching than I'm talking about here, or do you um, or are you cool with it? Are there any other cards that are like archetypal cards that maybe one of the things I left off the list and where you would put them here? I'd be curious to hear you guys' thoughts on that down in the comments. But I'm out of here for today. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, I will keep you. Uh, up to date on all things Yu-Gi-Oh! news going forward. We had a really busy week last week. We'll see how busy this week is. Probably not as busy, but I think there'll still be some stuff here that's going to be exciting, and uh, I can't wait to bring it to you. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you so much for watching, as always. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.